So I and welcome to another episode here for the Fagot Pod Mindful Media and Communication. As I promised in the last episode where I was reflecting about all things teaching, education and so on. This time it's again about media, communication, all those things. And about a very current topic that, I mean a global topic, but also for me as a German, like a very important topic right now. Euro 2024, European Championships in football, and it's football, my American friends, uh, are underway in Germany right now. And so I figured it's might be worth it to just look at like what's happening there from a media and communications point of, point of view, okay? Um, I'm trying to be as unbiased as possible, but we're so going to win the championship. <laughs> Who can stop Musiala and Wirtz? The answer is no one, obviously. But I'm not here to talk football per se. I'm talking the whole event, okay? So let's, let's jump right into the Euros 2024 in Germany, okay? And as a German, I want to just quickly like relive the summer fairy tale 2006 when the World Cup was hosted in Germany, um, which was pretty crazy because I think it was the first time that Germany was like being recognized. I don't like that word that much, but it was being recognized maybe as like a country that's not as mean and unhappy as it's been portrayed in the world uh, because it was an amazing time and people came to Germany and, and, and loved it there because Germany in the summer is actually a very nice place to go. And all those public celebrations, we call it public viewing. I know it means something different in actual in, in, in the English language, but it's like those, those public fan areas where you could watch the games on big screens and with like lots of people coming together it was the first time in 2006. It was fantastic. And Ever since, I think I moved to Australia in 2007 and people I met, I remember vividly, I met people in Darling Harbour uh, in Sydney um, walking around and one year I had a, or two guys, it was two guys at least, I, I, don't, I don't remember talking to two guys, but it must have been more. They had a football and they were just kicking back and forth and then um, the ball came to me, but I was just walking in Darling Harbour, right? And I just passed it back from my being polite, that's what you do, right? And then he's like, hey, let's let's just play a little. Let me just pass the ball back and forth in Darling Harbor. And he's like, where are you from? I'm from, I'm from Germany. And then those were two Italians. And usually, you know, Germans and Italians. Mm. Uh, but they're like, hey, we've been, we've been there for the World Cup. It's so cool. You guys are much nicer than we thought. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> and so I think that was, that, that was just a cool thing to experience, right? So... Having it said, like, so the Euros, World, World Championship, World Cup, and so on, of course, are an important event for the host country, right? We've had it now in a few other countries as well. Like, we had the World Cup in Qatar, for example. They had it for different reasons, I, I assume. But um, so those events are big. They are powerful, impactful on, on lots of different levels, right? Like, on a societal level, on, like, personal levels, on, like, intercultural levels, and so on. So that's why I'm trying to look into that a little bit today. And one thing I want to wanna, wanna use to kick off the, the episode, basically, is if you look at like how the media portrays the Euro 2024, okay? And most of the time, of course, the media, especially German media, but also like global media, is like in a very positive mindset about this, <laughs> especially if you compare it to like the Qatar World Cup. Um, it's like all about excitement. It's about the unity. It's about like celebrating the event, right? And usually the media tries to pick up some some human interest stories on the way. So why should we care about it? Oh, look at this, look at that. There's a, a documentary coming out right now. It came out last last week, the week before, about like uh, three German players. Um, so they followed them around like for a year on the way to the Euros. One of them didn't even make it into the, the, the final squad. And so it's like, look how the sadness and look at the, the pain and the agony and everything. So like lots of human interest stories, but not only of players, also, people like somewhat associated or touched by it, like people that work there, right? That get a job from that and so on. So the media tries to f figure out how to get some human touches into that, that whole thing. And as we know, um, that of course fits the framing theory. We talked about the framing theory many a times already, right? So the media puts a frame around an event that is beneficial to the agenda, more than a second, that the media is trying to promote. Right? So we want some happy feelings right now. We want some positivity. We want you to click on that and be like, yeah, let's go. Ooh, well, uh, Euros, yeah, nice, awesome. So we put like a positive frame on it and be like, look at this human interest story. Look at this person now finding a job there and making more money. Look at that person. And so framing theory, as you probably remember, hopefully, 
means the media puts a frame around an event to make sure that we understand it in a way that they want us to understand it in order to further their goals. Okay, so that's the framing theory. And right now there's, there are lots of positive frames. Not only, of course, there are also media outlets, programs that use like a more negative frame to point a finger on like what's going wrong, but more on this in five minutes or so, okay? Um, we can also see that, of course, as, as soon as there's a big event and there's lots of interest happening, of course, commercialization sets in, right? Because everyone's like about like making money. I want to make money from that event, for example, right? So, of course, media companies, they leverage that event for advertisement and sponsorships. I listened to a few podcasts on that because it's a crazy time being based in Thailand. And even the podcasts, they're like full of ads right now because, of course, everybody's jumping on like, I want to monetize as much as possible because I know people got to listen to the podcast. And here, of course, we see that especially digital media plays a huge role in expanding like reach and engagement to further uh, get a bigger audience, obviously, right? because we're all on social media. So right now, the digital media, of course, is pushing that as much as traditional media is as well, or maybe even more. And I mean, I just looked up the highlights from the Germany game, for example, and all of a sudden my whole algorithm is like all Euros, football, this and that. So n that makes sense, right? Not saying it's great that like you get flooded with it just because I clicked on it once and then it's, it's flooding you, but understandable. And that also happens, of course, because there's so much money in there, right? So, so media companies are throwing lots of money into like targeted advertisement to make sure that once you look at something that's related to it, you will always look at their brand, their, their commercials, their documentaries, whatever they're publishing, okay? We call this like the, the spot media complex. That's not, a, that's not a great name for it because it's like the military industrial complex, right? Those things, so it, but yeah, most people, when you read up on that in like uh, academic literature, it's called the sport media complex. And that just explains a little bit like the, the, this, this, the symbiotic relationship between like sports organizations, um, like media companies, advertisers, and so on. And it, of course, there's like a certain dynamic in there because the media companies have their ideas of what they want to achieve, right? The sports organizations have their ideas of what they want to achieve, more members, for example, right? Um, selling more merchandise. In come the sponsors, like Adidas, for example, for the German team, they also have their ideas of what they want to achieve. So this, the symbiosis is like a huge back and forth, right? For, also, for example, like Germany dropped Adidas as like their official uh, kit sponsor from 2026 onwards, I think. Like tra I think 26 is the last time that Adidas will be the, the, the sponsor on the kit or will, will, will uh, provide Germany with the, with, the, with the kit. So now Adidas came out with like an amazing, an amazing advertisement for the Three Lions for the, Br the British, the English team, sorry. Um, that's not a coincidence, right? Obviously, that's not a coincidence. So this back and forth is very interesting to see, but you, the all overarching se sentiment or theme is here, of course, we want to make money, right? No matter what, we want to make money. And this also leads me, of course, to one of our favorite series in the podcast, Agenda Setting Theory, because obviously media outlets, while they are patriotic and while they have their favorites, in the end, it's always the bottom line that matters. So their agenda is obviously make as much money as possible or, of course, follow the agenda of whoever owns them, whoever influenced them the most. This could be then political, for example, but more is all in the second. So agenda setting, you remember that. Everybody has an agenda. If people say they don't have an agenda, they're lying. Everybody has an agenda. And media outlets try, of course, to further their agenda by showing us certain media content, you know, movies, games, ads, highlights, whatnot. For example... The, the, the Germany won, I, I just picked the German examples now, of course, because I'm German, right? So Germany won 5-1 against Scotland in the, the opening match. Everybody's happy. Everyone's like, yeah, that's so cool. Ooh, let's go, yeah. And so I try to look at some content that's online right now, mostly all positive. But then there's this one channel, um, like a news channel, and they're all negative. They're like, oh, there was a, that was like a lame opening ceremony, for example. So they're trying really hard to find something negative because that's like their agenda to just it on on things because they they think there's probably there's too much positive content anyways everyone has the same positive like that was awesome content 
if we produce content, it's like, that sucks. Then the few people, which could also be like a few thousand, of course, people that think the same, they will be like, yeah, that sucks. So yeah, that's agenda setting. You, you make up your mind, your goal, what do you want to achieve? And then how do you achieve that? Okay, so everybody has an agenda. Mostly, of course, making money. Or my next point on my agenda for today, politics, of course. Sports and politics, unfortunately, go always hand in hand. It's always like, no, sports shouldn't be made political. Yeah, but it is. <laughs> like everything is political, right? Everything is political. So, so is sports, so is the biggest sporting event of the year, obviously. Okay. And two things I, I think that I can see there being like on the forefront when it comes to an event like the Euros is nationalism, obviously. <laughs> tough, tough topic when it comes to Germany. <laughs> and soft power. Okay. So, of course, governments in general, when events like this come around, they use those events to promote like national pride, unity, and so on. Again, Germany, national pride, difficult topic. We don't really have much of that. We don't, we don't dare to show it only during World Cups, Euros, and so on. That's the only time we will see German, German flags being waved in Germany, I think, because yeah. uh, we're very aware of our, of our past. Um, what we do want to highlight, though, is, of course, like, infrastructure for example maybe even culture i'm from bavaria like the people with the funny lederhosen and stuff and maybe even culture or like how well we can organize stuff like that's gonna be the best most well organized event ever people will always say man the event in germany damn remember euro 24 that was great man that's that's probably one of the goals that germany has and this is some kind of of soft power right because that's what you want to be known for german engineering german punctuality german this so yeah, promoting your soft power by putting on like this amazing, fantastic event that no one else could have pulled off in a manner that you pulled it off. Okay. So nationalism, again, tough. More on this in a second. Uh, in Germany, but but soft power definitely something that that my uh, my home country is definitely looking into like to promoting. And this leads me to like one of the other theories that that we that we should discuss a little bit. And I'm gonna butcher it because I can't pronounce stuff. Uh, cultural hegemony. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned this before in a podcast. I mentioned a class all the time. Um, that simply talks about how, how like dominant cultural norms, right? And values are being reinforced through media portrayal of the event. So in Germany right now, you would think you would see like lots of blonde people, but you're not. Because of course it's Germany is a super mega diverse country, right? If you followed history after the World War and so different people coming. So it's a very diverse country. Now the media is trying, which is, I think, fair, to portray it as a diverse country. That's also um, the goal of the current campaign that Adidas did with the German national team to promote diversity, for example, which I think was a very cool campaign. And so the media is trying to showcase how diverse the team is, how diverse like our players are. And so trying to portray like those cultural norms to something that's a little bit different to like the cliche from back in the day. Okay. Now, of course, on the other hand, there are also media outlets that are maybe a bit more, more right, right, actually, <laughs> that go like, yeah, 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 cool, cool, but hey, we want some real German cultures in there. And so there's like a little bit of like this, this war of cultural norms right now going on in the, in the German media. I want to say it's like more like 80% diversity, 20% of like, no, Germany, it needs to be more German. Um, but there is some conflict there, okay? And of course, this leads to lots of political messaging being attached to the event, right? Politicians attending the events, being like, yeah, I'm at the event, look at me, I'm so cool, I'm here. I'm like, uh. In the World Cup 2006, we, uh, we had our chancellor there being like, oh yeah, it's so exciting, and things like this. Right? So of course, politicians want to go, they want to associate themselves with, with the, the positive event that, that, that's being put on, of course, right? But of course, A, that's like, even right-wing politicians tried it, right? So there are lots of right-wing politicians in the news right now because of certain scandals. They also go to those events like, look, everything is fine, look at me, all is cool. And of course, they're, so they're misusing that event. And then, of course, um, those events are a great distraction from any domestic issue. We had it in Qatar, right? You, everyone was aware of like the human rights abuse and so on. Still, everyone's like, hey, look, a World Cup in Qatar. Oh, let's watch it. Um, and Germany isn't perfect. It's not Qatar, but of course there are lots of domestic problems happening 
<coughs> AFD, right wing party, the second strongest party in the European uh, elections. What? So there are lots of domestic issues that, of course, now are being swept under the rug because, hey, ooh, let's go team Germany, right? So, mm, and this, it also happens though in other countries. It's not just in Germany, right? It's like something similar as might be happening in England, for example. It's like, hey, hey, don't look at the politics right now. Look at how Team England is doing over there in the Euros, for example. How Team England, Team England is kicking ass. How Jude Bellingham is doing this and that, right? So the, every media outlet in every country is doing that. Okay, or every political political campaigner who wants to like influence perception in the within the audience is trying to steer the media in that way, of course. Okay, now I also try to be positive in the podcast, of course. As you know, I'm like a positive ray of sunshine. So. There are, of course, lots of pros that come with also hosting an event like the Euros, of course. Okay, so let me just quickly talk about a few of those pros, and then I'll talk about a few, a few cons, because I'm not all not only a positive ray of sunshine, I'm also a realistic ray of sunshine. Um, but let me do this for a second. So, okay, of course, there are economic benefits, right? If you're hosting like an event like this, you're making money because tourism, job creation, more business opportunities, more advertisement, more everything. You're making money. Interesting enough, though, not all the money saved in Germany. The UEFA, which is the governing body for European championships, like FIFA, right, the UEFA, they get most of the money. Uh, I just learned that like a week ago or so that actually like when there are like fests, like festivals, fan festivals being put on in the stadiums and so on, and uh, those what we call in Germany public viewing, but those, those fan areas with like the big screens and everything, that most of the money made there goes to the UEFA. <laughs> So licensing, I guess, which is crazy. And so the, the cities don't even make that much money from those events, hopefully from tourism and so on, but not from those events. Crazy. UEFA, interesting, in, interesting organization. Um, it leads to then also, of course, promoting diversity, inclusion, brings people together from different backgrounds. Nice. It highlights multiculturalism. It highlights social integration. Right, so it's basically like we're talking about this before, public sphere, right? We're talking about public sphere theory by Habermas many a times on this podcast. It's, it's, it creates a platform for public discourse. And this public discourse could be positive or negative or could be highlight different points. Like it could highlight inclusivity, inclusion, diversity, but it could also highlight the issues that we're still facing in Germany, right? So I think that's a positive. Even if you talk about negative issues, the positive is that it's been highlighted that people talk about it, which is a good thing because we need to talk about everything. Okay? So that's, I think, is a very positive effect that such an event has in any host country. Even in Qatar, the World Cup, right? People were finally talking more about it than before. It's like, hey, Qatar, what's up with Qatar? Oh, what well, human right? Oh, they don't. Oh, hmm. So that's a good thing. Okay? Now, I wouldn't be German if I wouldn't be talking about the cons. Correct? Correct. So, what are some of the cons of hosting, the, hosting such an event, okay? One, I think, is that marginalized voices are being overshadowed. Yeah, the, the, like I said earlier, ongoing social political issues are being ignored. And if you speak out against, like, hey, you shouldn't all be happy right now. We have this issue, the right-wing right -wing propaganda popping up more and more. We have all those issues. Populism being, like, on the rise again. It's like, no, no, hey, for now, kind of shut up now, because we are all happy. So, so marginalized voices are being drowned out, which I think is, of course, not okay, not good. We need those voices, those voices that put the finger in the wound and say, like, hey, don't forget about this. All right, so that's a problem. And then, of course, um, displacement. I'm not sure if like, there's lots of displacement happening in Germany. I hope not. In Qatar, we saw it. Um, but definitely gentrification, right? Gentrification and host cities. Like, all the cities, the cities are uh -huh, cleaning up. And so, of course, there's lots of gentrification happening just to make it look pretty, look, make it look nice, make sure that where all the different teams are being hosted, everything is pretty awesome, cool, clean, and so on, expensive, obviously. So that's, I think, of course, a big, 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 big issue. And then once the teams are leaving again, what happens with all the expensive stuff that you build? And normal people can't afford it, so huh, what happens next, right? So that's, of course, a problem. The economic costs are also a problem. Like I said earlier, right? The UEFA takes most of the cake, most of the money. The cities don't. So they have expenses in like infrastructure, security. Um, so that, that means like long-term benefits might not even be there. Like short-term, yeah, you have the short-term tourism bringing some money in. But once the tourism is done, you still have like this huge expense. And then 
you have to maintain it, of course. You have to maintain the infrastructure. You cannot just let it die again, like and then rot to and, and stuff like this. So what's happening then, right? So that's a, I think, a big problem there. Um, but hey, I'm not here to only whine and complain, so, but I think those are some of the points that need to be discussed, okay? I think Germany probably has a better chance than Qatar of like making use of everything that they're building for the euros, of course. Um, but still, you know, this build stuff, use it now and then, not sure how to use it later is, of course, like something that needs to be discussed. Okay, I have, I think, three more quick points to make uh, on, on, on my list here. One is um, how the media is, of course, also trying to engage the audience. We all know that you need to have like an engaged audience, right? If you do, if, that's why I say, hey, if you like this episode, like, share, subscribe, leave a comment because comments really help, like leave a review because reviews really help. So engagement. If you don't have an engagement, you don't know if people like you, people hate you, people even watch you, people listen to you. And as a big media outlet, you don't make any money if you don't have engagement. So everyone trying to engage the audience, clicks, news, downloads, whatever that might be, right? So one of the theories we discussed many, many, many times before is the user gratification theory. And this, of course, also applies here. Right? So the motivations behind like all this engagement is always like, hey, I engage with content because it's of use for me and it gratifies, right? It gives me something that I want entertainment, social interaction, for example. You have fun, excitement in the moment. So the Euros give all that. It's a big party event that you, you feel part of a group. You feel part of something special. So, of course, the media is utilizing that, saying, hey, this movement that everybody wants to be a part of, we show more of that. We show how you can be part of it. We show you, like, what's happening. We enable you to join so that you will use our channel. We will, we will follow our IG, our whatever social media you're using. You will read our um, clips. Uh, you will watch our clips. You will read our, our reviews and so on. Okay, so that's the using gratification theory. Give the audience what they are what they are yawning, yearning for. Me and English, um, what are you yearning for? <laughs> and so then they will give you their, their attention. Okay? Okay. I have been up very late, so maybe that's why I said yawning. Uh, also, we have the media event theory um, that I think haven't mentioned much before, but it's pretty easy to understand. So a major media event captures global attention and hence creates a shared experience. Okay, so that's the media event theory. So you have a big event and this big event um, creates a shared experience. If you have shared experiences that you don't have by yourself, but that you share with others, it's mostly more intense because you share with your friends, with your family, with your peers, with people that you like, people that you hate even. But you, you have those emotions that are being like amplified because you're not alone. Okay, that's also a reason, for example, why lots of YouTube influencers, for example, have those, those scheduled watch parties. So you're like, hey, schedule the video and then you watch it together while your video airs. You're in the chat to be like, hey, guys, I'm here right now. Let's watch my video together. Because you want to create shared experience. Okay, so shared experiences usually, according to statistics, lead to like a stronger bonding, a stronger connection. So media event theory, again, suggests shared experiences, stronger bonds, stronger emotional connection. Hence, we consume more of the media, more of the event, also more ads, spend more money, buy more shirts, and so on. Okay? I have a few examples for you, of course, before we, before we wrap things up here. So um, I'm ready to, to, to like come back to the beginning, right? So the media covers the event. Why? Because it fits the agenda. Most of the media right now is rather positive, of course, um, because the event just started and all the games were, were really... Um, Italy, Albania, but the rest the rest was really cool. <laughs> Italy, Italy did well too. I'm just messing with the Italians. But it was, it was a great event so far, the first two days um, as at the time of recording. So it's rather positive, right? But every, again, everyone has their agenda. And it's trying to highlight different aspects that they think will engage their audience the most. Then, political statements. Right? We see politicians traveling there, not only Germans, but to politicians from all over Europe, traveling there, saying like, hey, it's me, everything is awesome, and so on. Just showing themselves to, to their potential um, voters and see, say like, I'm a person of the people. I enjoy the same things that you enjoy, of course. So Political, political statements are being made a lot there. And we see the impact of your host cities, like Munich, for example, the big, let's say it one more time, public viewing, the big fan area. We call it Fan Mile in Germany. Actually, I guess a German, we don't have miles. Why would we call it mile? Oh, <laughs> should be like a fan kilometer. 
Okay, I'm losing track. So, um, those are the impact on host cities, okay, it's all zero. So, three things that are big, the media coverage, right, agenda setting, political statements, also agenda setting, framing, and so on. And of course, the impact, the economic impact on host cities, like, like Munich, Berlin, but not only where they play, but also where they host the teams, okay? Has positive impacts, but of course, also lots of challenges that I mentioned earlier. Okay, that was the wrap. So, that said, I'm still excited about the Euros. <laughs> I'm a bit sad that like, the, the playing times of all the games is very late here for, for tight time, unfortunately. So, T Germany played at 2 a.m., so I did not stay up. If we make the final, I'm, I will stay up, I promise. Um, until, until then, I'm not sure. Um, but overall, I'm very happy to, to see like, my countrymen having fun again and to, like, f after such a long time, like, putting Germany on the map again in terms of like, being a hospital country, being like, a very friendly country, being friendly and fun people too. We can, be, we can have fun too. We just need to schedule it. Let me know what you think. How do you feel about like, that media overkill? Do you think, like, hey, it's too much? Like I said earlier, like, my whole feed is now full of only Euro stuff. Is that too much for you? Do you think, no, you should focus more on the important stuff? Or do you say, no, no, that's all cool, that's all okay, because that's the most important thing right now. Let me know what you think. Um, as always, I would love your comments. I would love your feedback. I would love your reviews too. Um, yeah, stay safe, take care, follow at FunFitPod on all those channels, and may the best team win. In the end, it's going to be Germany. <laughs> Until then, thank you for joining. Sorry, Cal. <laughs>